Hi there, Joey from dayjobhacks.com. Today I wanna to talk about affiliate marketing, tracking. This is going to be one of the most boring videos you've ever watched. However, if you wanna be a super affiliate and you wanna start making serious money online, you need to understand how tracking works Everything is related to data in this game. If you don't know how to track your data and you don't know how to make changes to your campaigns based on that data, you will never make it as an affiliate marketer. So as boring as it is, I highly recommend you watch this video. Everything about it is going to show you how to track, how to watch your data, a bunch of different things. And just because it's such a boring topic, if you check the comments below or you check the actual description, I mean, of this video below, you'll see that I've timestamped certain subjects that might be important to you. You might know a lot of it, but some of it is going to be new to some people. So let's get inside. I'm going to talk about uh, what CPA, affiliate marketing tracking platform I use, the network tracking, we're gonna talk about conversion pixels, we're gonna talk about uh, third party tracking platforms, uh, all this stuff is going to be in this video and I'm gonna do it in a systematic way so that you can understand from start to finish how to track conversions in every single step along the way. All right, welcome to the inside of this presentation. Today I'm going to do a quick overview. Um, I'm, first of all, I'm gonna assume that you already understand what affiliate marketing is, how it works, all of that stuff. If not, there are links in the description for our free training, as well as our advanced training for powerhouseaffiliate.com. Go there and check it out if you do not know what I'm talking about. But I am going to assume that you already understand pretty much everything except for the tracking. So that's what we're going to focus on today. How to track your website, how to track your offer, and how to set up conversion tracking so that you can see where all of your conversions are happening. So today I'm going to do overview of just basically what we're talking about. We're going to talk about Google Tag Manager. This is the tool I use as an affiliate. Um, to track and add in all of my tags onto my website. I'm going to show you how to set that up quickly. We're also going to talk about Google Analytics, network tracking, how networks track between each other, CPA affiliate networks in particular, okay? Um, and then I'm going to talk about third-party tracking, which is what I use to track all of my landing pages and everything like that. I use CPV Lab Pro. They just came out with a new version which is awesome and I'm gonna show you why I use it and some of the features that are perfect for affiliates, okay? Next, we'll talk about postbacks and pixels, what those are and how they work. And then we're going to talk about tracking conversions and this is going to be tracking conversions between your third-party tracking platform, your network and your ad account, okay? And we're going to focus on Facebook today because a lot of people use Facebook, but believe me, all of the strategies you learn in this presentation will also be applicable to most traffic sources online. They all use pixels, they all use postbacks, and they all pretty much work the same way. So I'm gonna show you basically how it works. Okay, so here we are inside, uh, well, this is the front page of Google Tag Manager. This is where you would come to sign up, you can start for free with Google Tag Manager. I use the free version. Once you log into Google Tag Manager, it's going to ask you to create an account. So each account is actually another website. So I'm going to use the affiliate website that I'm using in this example, and I'm going to create an account. Okay. So this one we'll call it um, Affiliate Marketing Game. This is the sample website I set up for this training, AffiliateMarketingGame.com. Okay. Country. Um, in this case, I'm in Canada, so I'm just going to put Canada. You can put whatever country you want here. And I'm going to leave that unchecked and the container set up to put your website. So here's the website there. And now I'm going to select web because I'm doing web traffic here. I'm going to create that, go through their terms. Yes, uh, basically you can read all that if you want. And now what we have is 
the tag manager set up all done. We have a workspace. And now what we want to do is we want to take this code and we put it onto our website. This is the only time we'll have to put code onto our website if we use Google Tag Manager. So this means that like we can track all of our conversions and everything from multiple different traffic sources all inside Google Tag Manager by using this tag. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this Tag Manager and now there is a plugin for WordPress if you want to use the plugin. In this case, I'm going to manually install it on my landing page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my sample landing page. This is just a sample landing page I set up uh, in Optimize Press, okay? I'll use Optimize Press 3.0 and you can see the link down in the description of this video if you want to get access to that. It's one of the best tools for building landing pages, basically. So here in the template setup, I've got it set up on WordPress. I can go to settings and basically add in page scripts and I can add in that header script here. Click save. And now what I want to do is I also want to come in and grab the other piece for the body. So I'm going to take that. And now what I do for this is I come back and there should be a body one here and I can paste that there. So now I click save again. And now this page is basically set up with Google Tag Manager. I can set up all my Facebook pixels, all my Microsoft pixels, my Google pixels, all inside this area now that I have this on there. Now, if you want, you can do it site-wide. You can put your Google tag site-wide by using the WordPress um, plugin. But in this case, like I said, it's just on the landing page. So now that I have that installed, this is where I'm going to be working to track all of my other things. And there's so many different things I can do now. I can use triggers, okay? And we're gonna talk about that here later. Once we start talking about firing your pixel, for specific events and this is where the triggers come into play so that is how you set up google tag manager we're going to come back in here later but let's cover the next subjects in this presentation before we come back here so it all makes sense in the end so now let me talk about one type of tracking we want to put on our website right away whether we're an affiliate or whether we're just a website owner in general it's always great to have google analytics tracking everything on our website Okay, so Google Analytics, again, is a free tool you can get. Go to Google Analytics, sign up for free, and again, it'll ask you to create an account, which is your website. In this case, I have an example here, Day Job Hacks. That is the website I created for the training program at PowerOS Affiliate. It is the website I reference a lot in some of the videos. And as you can see, I have Google Analytics set up. So once you've created your account, you can come down here and click on Admin, and I'm gonna show you how to add this code into the Google Tag Manager. So there are ways you can integrate it, but you can just grab your tracking info right here for day job hacks in this case, and I'm gonna look at the tracking code. So this is going to connect now to my website using this tracking code. So I wanna copy this and go back into Google Tag Manager, and I'm gonna show you why we want Google, Google Analytics here in a minute. But what you can do here is you can now create a tag. So you want to create a tag and now it's going to ask you for the title. So you can call this Google Analytics and we want to configure that and over here on the right side you can see they integrate with many different platforms. They have a lot of traffic sources here you can integrate with but for now we just want to do Google Analytics and I'm going to use the Universal Analytics so I'm going to click on that. I want to track all page views in this case. Now what I'll do is I will select a new variable here. And it's going to ask me for the Google Analytics tracking ID. That is what I paste here. And I'll do auto and save. the. Oh, actually the variable here, we're going to call it Google Analytics again. Save that. Now, you can see it's integrated there. And now what I wanna do is I wanna trigger this to fire every single page view. So click this circle here and select all pages. And now what's going to happen is this will fire the, the, the pixel. So when we say fire a pixel, it means it's going to tell Google Analytics, somebody just landed on my website. They're looking at a page right now. On all pages, this is going to fire every time somebody hits my website. So click save. And now you can see that Google Analytics is now in here, okay? Um, now you're gonna click Submit. 
and you can name it if you want. I usually just skip it, but you can just publish it and hit skip here. And now that is done. So if I go back into the workspace at Tag Manager, if I want, I can preview that tag and I'll show you that in a second. But first I have to save this page. Now let's just click preview and you can see if that is actually firing when you visit the website. So you click preview inside your tag manager. And now I'm going to go over to this website and I'm gonna preview this website. And as you can see at the bottom, tags fired Google Analytics. So tag manager is now telling me that it just fired the Google Analytics because I visited this website. So this is how it all works. Next, I can now go back in and turn off the preview until the next um, time I wanna test it. So click turn off. Now, now that you know how to set up Google Tag Manager, there are so many different opportunities you can do in terms of testing and tweaking and looking at stuff. But let's just look inside quickly at what you can now see inside Google Analytics. As an example, now that I have this on my website, I can start seeing active users on my website. Um, this is for the last seven days here. Not crazy traffic on this website, but it's um, still getting traffic. And you can see in real time, or you can look at your audience data, you can see all of the demographics, the interests, their geo, their behavior, a whole bunch of stuff you can look at in here um, as a website owner. But it's not really great for affiliate marketing per se, unless you're just using it to look at your data to see who's visiting, because you can't really track a, a lot of things that you could if you're running paid traffic um, on a third-party tracking platform, which I'm gonna show you here in a second. However, you can still track your um, campaigns in here. You can look at your Google Ads data. There's just so much to talk about on Google Analytics that I really can't just ramble on about it too much. But what I use it mainly for is to look at the the behavior on my website. So I can look at you know the top pages. It's really good for if you're doing search engine optimization. I can look at the landing pages, so where people are coming in. I set up goals all the time on this, so I can see how many people have got my free ebook from the, the main website in the last seven days. So about two a day come to that website and get the free ebook, so I can see where this is happening. Really good stuff you can do. You can drill down into your content, see where they're coming from, so that next time I wanna set up an ad campaign, I'll have the information I need to kind of set my targeting better and maybe I'll be able to see which websites I should or what web pages I should mimic in my paid ad campaigns. For example, if I want to come in here and look at the demographics, I'm pretty sure we're going to see that it's mostly male between the age of say 20 to 35. Let's just confirm that by looking at the data. 25 to 34 is um, most of the traffic. 18 to 34, we'll say, is the main. Uh, let's look at some more data. You can actually do more than seven days. So I can go to the last 30 and look at this stuff. And I can see that, again, most of the stuff here is um, the younger demographic, gender. I'm sure it'll be more male than female. Um, yes, more male than female, right? So now that I know that, when I'm setting up my ad campaigns, in the next parts, when I'm setting up my tracking um, for or my targeting in Facebook, we'll say I could target the male demographic from the age of say 20 to 35. So that's the, the purpose of using Google Analytics. Now let's move on in this presentation. Let's now talk about network tracking, your CPA networks. This is Max Bounty. They use their own custom tracking platform. This is the platform I'm looking at right now. It's called a tracking platform. This is where they put all their offers, where they put all of the links, their postbacks and all that stuff, which we're gonna see here in a second. And there's other networks out there that use different software, but you'll notice as a CPA affiliate that oftentimes you'll log into a network and it looks the same as another network because they are using industry software such as you know Cake Marketing, there are, there's one called Has Offers, and there's one called Everflow. Now for Vault Media, which is my own personal private network, we use Everflow and this is what it would look like. So if you're ever on a network that looks like this, when you log in, they're using Everflow. It's one of the best tracking platforms, in my opinion, for CPA affiliate networks. 
And it, it, as an affiliate in this network, you can get access to a lot of different um, reports and stuff like that. As an owner of the network, I get a lot more data as well. And that's why I use it. And the pricing, you, you cannot beat the pricing of Everflow versus cake marketing and has offers. I just find they're, they're overpriced in my opinion, especially for what they can do. So with that being said, as an affiliate marketer, now you come in and you're looking for an offer to run on your landing page. You want to set up an offer. So these networks use tracking between an advertiser and themselves. So the network here is using tracking and the person that owns, say, sweepstakes a day, they have tracking as well. And they are probably using something like Everflow or has offers or cake as well. So this system, Max Bounty, is integrating with another tracking platform behind the scenes that we as affiliates never see. Okay. So if there's any mishaps going on between sweepstakes a day and max bounty we will never know as an affiliate this is why it's very um important to understand direct relationships okay if you're going through a network there's one added tracking platform that you have to go through and sometimes even networks like max bounty say partners with vault media will say and vault media is now running an offer so they're brokering it and that means now, not only are you as an affiliate running through Vault, but then it's being taken from Max Bounty. So there's a connection to Max Bounty. Then there's a connection to the advertiser. That's two other tracking platforms in the back end that you do not see where you could potentially again lose tracking. There's always a mishap in between systems, okay? So if, if they're not using particular um, types of tracking pixels, that means that your conversions will not appear uh, as often. So this is why you see in many training pl programs, including our own Inside Powers Affiliate, we talk about testing different networks and we talk about working with direct advertisers, okay? So that you bypass the network tracking. You bypass all the problems that happen between tracking platforms. So how do these tracking platforms work between each other and how does it work for you? Well, let's pick an offer here and let's go through the steps so you can get a grasp of how networks send data to each other, okay? Including to you. And now, okay, work at home moms, we'll say, or one of these, retire with freedom. Okay, perfect. Retire with freedom. That sounds amazing. So this is, let's say this is the offer I want to run. Right now, we need to grab the tracking link. So we want to grab a tracking link and we do the tracking link builder here, build tracking link. Because I just want the tracking link and here's the tracking link. So now here's where it gets important. We want to be able to track this link through our own third party tracking platform and through our website and all of those things. So in this case, we need to start using sub IDs. Every single tracking platform that you go into, every network uses what are called sub IDs. In this case, we're just gonna put one and two as an example, just so that we can see the setup here. So these sub IDs are, are what we're going to be sending back into into max bounty okay so when we put this link into our tracking system we're going to be populating this one and this two with data and it's going to send it back into max bounty that's exactly how the networks track between each other as well they are sending in s1 they would say the affiliate so if i'm if if, if i'm running a, an affiliate network like vault media for example i would put the affiliates id here so let's say you're john smith and you're running an, an offer through vault media i'm going to tell max bounty that when somebody clicked on that link that was john smith okay so now max bounty knows okay hey john smith is sending us traffic and um, we want to know why his tr quality sucks okay so they'll say what's i'll say what sub id are you referring to they'll say well the one that says john smith and i'll say okay perfect then let me check into John Smith's data. And then we look in, in the data that we see as administrators of these networks. And so basically that's how it works. But as an affiliate, when you're running, you're sending in data like a, a, a click ID. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean by that because this is now where we're going to get into 
the third party tracking platform, okay? This is where it really matters. So you really need to understand this part. So pay close attention. So the, like I said, the third party tracking platform I'm using is called CPV Lab Pro, okay? This uh, is a new version, it just came out. It's version seven. It has some really great features. Now, just to so you understand what this is, it's basically the same as other platforms out there like Volume, there's BMob, there's Thrive Tracker, there's Funnel Flux, a whole slew of different tracking platforms out there. CPV Lab Pro has been around for at least 15 years from as, uh, at least as far as I know. Um, they went through some new management in the last uh, year, we'll say, and they've been making a lot of different changes now, and they're changes for the good. Now, aside from their poor design on their website, I can't really complain about anything else, okay? Everything else is really good aside from these color schemes, okay? But looking here, you can see that you can actually join CPV Lab Pro for free, so you can actually start using it now free as an affiliate marketer. So before uh, there were only one or two options for, uh, there was only one option that I knew of, which was BMob that had a free account. Now with their new recent changes, you can start using this free. So if you want, go to dayjobhacks.com slash CPV Lab Pro and you can get yourself a special discount applied to your account. The link is down below in the description. Now let's set up the campaign now so that we can see how we set that up with the offer to track our conversions. Let's go in there now and create a campaign. So here's just an example of what I can see as someone who uses CPV Lab Pro. Now this is a sample campaign that I was running on Bing for Powerhouse Affiliate just to give you some data. You can come over here on the right side and you can select what features or what data you wanna see in your report, which keywords are converting and which ones are not. So when I'm running Bing ads, which is a search traffic network, I can see here that some of them, some of them keywords like work from home jobs was getting conversions. However, um, some other ones like this one, 32 visitors, how to money. Um, bad keyword needs to be paused, and this is the type of type of data you will not see inside your Google Analytics account. That is why you need a third-party tracking platform because um, you can only track your Google AdWords campaigns in Google Analytics, not your Microsoft, not your Facebook, not your native ads, whatever other stuff you plan on running in the future as an affiliate. You will not get that data unless you have a party, a third-party tracking platform such as this. So as you can see, there's just a ton of data here. Now at the bottom, you'll see the ad performance. So I can see which of my ads over here on Bing converted the best. You can see one here was at 2.3%. This one here was 3%. So when I restart this campaign, I'm going to focus on this ad. I'm going to try and mimic that ad and split test it again and kind of pause these other ones. And I can also see which landing page converted best. So how do we do that? Let's go in and let's see exactly how to set up a campaign. Ad campaign is where we're going now. We want to create a direct link and landing page campaign. Okay, that is the main one. There are other ones there available that you can set up later. We have multiple case studies inside Powerhouse Affiliate on lead capture, multi-option. Um, this multi-option one is for listicles, but in this case, we're doing a simple landing page Let's call this work from home. The traffic source here, you can see they already have a whole bunch of traffic sources plugged into the system, but you can add manually up in the settings here if you want. In this case, we're going to use Facebook as our traffic source. Current domain, I'm going to use that. I've already set this up properly according to the, the way you set it up on CPV Lab. Now here, the direct redirect is when you want to show your affiliate network your landing page, okay? This is a very important setting here, okay? If your land, if your CPA network doesn't allow you to hide the referrer, you have to select direct redirect. In most cases, I'm going to be doing either a double meta refresh or a redirect loop. This one is the most um, effective, the redirect loop, 
You're not going to be sending any data into the CPA affiliate network. CPA affiliate networks in their back end in the administrative section can see all of your referred links, okay? So if you have a landing page that's doing super good, right? You're making tons of money. Um, your, your affiliate manager can go in and check that out, see what's going on. And if he wants, he can either share it with his buddies or, you know, um, do it himself. So this is why we hide our referrer most of the time, unless it's against the rules. Um, most of the stuff I leave all the same, you're going to append a sub ID to the offer. And that's what, that's the important part here. We're going to append a sub ID into the offer like we showed where we're going to be putting the sub ID one, okay? Coming down, if you want to capture other data, you can select that here. Um, you can capture the user agent and the computer resolution. It'll capture most of the other stuff already automatically for you. Here are the macros and tokens that you can collect from your ad uh, from Facebook, okay? So here's what I would do. I would add campaign as well as ad set, as well as the ad. So now when you're running ads from Facebook, you can actually get all of this data so that you can have that inside your third party tracker. Coming down, now it's going to ask you for your landing page name. Let's just call it landing page one. And this is where we're gonna type in the URL for our landing page. Okay, so now we're going to add that in there. I put it in as landing page one, and I've typed in the landing page URL of the landing page we built on Optimize Press. I have set the share to 100%. If you wanna split test landing pages, you simply add a landing page, it adds the form again. You can add landing page two, another URL, and you split the share percentages to whatever you want. For now, I will set that to inactive. The offer, I have put the offer name as retire with freedom. The offer link from Max Bounty, as you can see, I have S1 equals at the end of it. That is because I want to send that through on the S1 variable so I can take out S2 and I just want to do S sub ID one. You can see the link here. I'm just going to remove that one and I'm going to put the link like that into CPV lab. Now, every time somebody clicks on the campaign URL, it is going to automatically, or when they click on the offer, I mean, it's going to automatically add a sub ID because we have set that up here to send an ID, append sub ID to the offer right here. And so now it's going to automatically do that for us and it's going to send it into Max Bounty every time somebody clicks on our offer link. So now what we need to do is we need to make sure that our landing page is set up with the proper links. So the next step is just basically save that campaign first and then we're gonna come down and we're going to grab this here. And what I, you know, it won't let you just select the link. So you have to take the whole thing, copy it, and I use a WordPad document or notepad, and I'm just gonna grab this link. This is your link that you're going to use on your landing page. So now you come back into your landing page, um, you're gonna edit the calls to action and the links, okay? So I'm just gonna close that here. So let's just pretend that this is landing page is completed. Um, I put an image here of the offer, and now this is my call to action. What I wanna do is I wanna edit that. So I'm gonna edit the campaign here. And I'm going to edit the landing page to add in my link. So here we are. Here we are. I'm going to edit this. I'm going to change that link. And we're going to add it right here. Okay. Paste link. You can put it to open in a new frame and then click save. Okay. So the link is there. But now what we want to do is we also have to add in the code from CPV Lab Pro. To do that, you come back in here. Step two, take this code and copy it. And put it into your page. So what I do is normally bring, come down to the bottom. Here you're going to go and you're going, or you're going to click this button here and you're going to click custom HTML. You want to put that down there somewhere and you want to edit this code and you want to enter it right there, paste that code. Now what, what, what I also recommend you do is the direct tracking for CPV Lab. This is going to allow people to arrive on your page and they don't have to come through the campaign link and this is great for Facebook, especially because Facebook doesn't like redirects, okay? So you need to do this. If you're running Facebook, you need to grab this optional traffic code. And for WordPress, we're going to use this JavaScript one. We're going to copy that, okay? It's going to ask you to replace the triple X 
with your landing page ID, okay? The actual, the actual landing page ID. So now is where it becomes important that you put an ID there. You can leave it as zero or we can put it as one. It doesn't really matter, but we need to make sure that when we put this code here on our landing page that we change these three X's to that ID. In this case, it will be one. We're going to go back and we're going to add that right here as well and we're going to change the three X's to a one, okay? That will ensure that everybody that lands on the page is automatically also added into our tracking platform. So now when you go to Facebook and you want to submit your ad, you do not have to use a, uh, a tracking link. You can use this URL of your landing page right here. And now Facebook won't see any redirects and they're happy and it's still all going to be tracked inside your CPV lab setup. Okay, very important for Facebook and Google, especially they use parallel tracking as well. They call it parallel tracking, direct tracking, direct traffic, whatever you want to call it. It's all the same thing and it's in there. Okay, so now we've got those things completed. Now what we want to do is we want to do conversion tracking. We want to track all of the conversions into CPV lab and we want to send conversions back into um, our traffic source. So how do we do that? Now is where we take this um, pixel down here. We're gonna come here. You can see all the tracking pixels available. They have multiple different tracking pixels. You can use an image pixel, an iframe, a script, or a server postback. Now here's where it's important. The server postback is the most accurate tracking you can do. Some affiliate networks don't allow server postbacks, which means you'll have to go the next level, which is iframe pixels, okay? You would just simply copy that. And now when you come into Max Bounty or whatever CPA network you are on uh, for Vault Media in your offer settings, it's the same thing. If you choose an offer in here, you'll see that you can add in a postback or you can do it right here in your account, postbacks, and you can add in postbacks right here by adding a postback. Now, for let's just do Max Bounty because that's what we're working on. Basically the same for every network. You can come down here and you can select a type. In this case, we want to use a URL. If we were going to put the iframe, we would do that and we would paste it there. You would see your iframe. But in this case, we want accurate tracking, highly accurate, and so that's why we're going to use URL and we're going to put our uh, server to server pixel here. And as you can see here, now you take this and you go back to max bounty. It's telling you to put sub ID here. This is the sub ID that we gave to max bounty in sub ID one. So we need to know how to pass back sub ID one. And you can see here right here, it says see available macros. If you click on this, if you want to send back sub ID one, you need to put this code snippet into your link. So we're going to take that and we're going to put that in place here. So now every time a conversion happens on Max Bounty, it's going to fire this link and it's going to send back the variable that we've sent into sub ID one from CPV lab. CPV lab will receive this and say, boom, there's a conversion. So let's save that. And now you can see it has been saved. So every time there's a conversion, it's going to come back in to CPV Lab Pro. Now let me just talk briefly about back to the network to network tracking. Some networks track from their advertiser through a server to server pixel, okay? Like we've done right here, S2S. But some advertisers and networks work with an iframe pixel. This is very bad, okay? What's happening there, 95% of the time you might get conversions, but there's about a five to 10% gap in conversions, meaning the iframe will not fire all of the time, meaning you're gonna lose money. If the network is working with an advertiser on a iframe pixel or advertisers or networks are working together and using uh, broker brokering their offers with iframe pixels, you're going to lose out as an affiliate, okay? Uh, it's not designed to make you lose money. It's just a fact that you will lose money. Um, some, some of them do it intentionally um, and some of them don't. But most networks, if you're working with a solid network, are always going to be using server to server. And if they're not, they're going to be telling you at the end of the month, every single month, how many conversions were missed because it's all being tracked, but just 
affiliates don't always see it. So make sure that they're using a server to server tracking. If they're not, you should be demanding from the network the data on how many conversions you're actually getting that aren't being tracked through the platforms, okay? Big deal for tracking, especially as an affiliate marketer, when our margins are already slim enough. We're barely making money on some campaigns. We can't have the networks taking um, you know, their cut by, by you know, shaving or by having iframe tracking set up between their advertisers. Because we know for a fact that many of conversions are missed by iframe tracking. I know this from experience from running a network for over eight years that basically it happens all of the time. And um, that's, that's just what it is, okay? So now that we have that set up, now the last step, we have, we have it all set up now, we have it so that people will click our link, all the data will come into CPV Lab. If a conversion happens, Max Bounty will tell CPV Lab. Now we need Max Bounty to tell Facebook at the same time, or we tell uh, Facebook through CPV Lab. Either way, we can tell Facebook that a, a, a conversion happened. And this is extremely important, especially if you want to use the conversion tracking through Facebook because the, uh, or objectives. And if you want to have success on Facebook, let's pull it up now. Um, inside Facebook here, we have the ability to track events. Events are basically the lifeblood of your campaign. If Facebook doesn't get this data, they're not going to be able to optimize for you. They're not going to be able to show ads to the right people. And you're not going to be able to know where conversions happened on the Facebook platform. So you need to pass that data to Facebook. Here's an example campaign or an account set up for, for um, a test here. We set up page view, contacts, leads, and initiate checkouts, okay? So these are different events you can add to your website. So what you need to first do when you come into your ad account is you want to come in here and you want to click on events manager. First thing you want to do is you want to install your code manually. So you're going to manually install your Facebook code. So you're going to copy this code, which I've just done. And now we're going to go back into Google Tag Manager. Okay, remember we're going to add all of our tracking inside Google Tag Manager so that all of our ad platforms are in one place. So here I'm going to add a new tag and we're going to call it Facebook Pixel. Okay. For tag configuration, we're going to go with custom HTML because the pixel for Facebook is a iframe pixel. Okay, you can see right here, it's actually an image pixel. Um, so that has to be HTML. Now that is the pixel code for the general pixel. So we're gonna add that and we're gonna trigger that on every single page view again. So we just select all pages and we're going to save this. Now, if we want to fire the pixel from Facebook on a specific event, such as a link click. So if you've watched my video about listicles, many times people will fire up a listicle in Facebook and will track link, link clicks first so that we can get some hot traffic. We can start seeing who's responding to our ads. So now if I want to add events like the link click, I can put that as an initiate checkout, okay? So to do that, I can grab the code itself or I can just update the, the pixel, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna update the pixel and what I'll do is I'll come over to tag manager and now what I wanna do is I wanna add another tag. This is going to be a tag that fires only when people click. I'm going to call it initiate checkout Facebook. Okay, and now I'm going to add again the custom HTML. I'm going to paste it, but here I'm going to change page view to initiate checkout. Now, for the triggering, we need to change this to something else. We need to change it to when people click on a link. I'm going to show you how to do that here. So I'm going to add a new trigger. I'm going to call it clicks CPV lab link. So we want to make sure it's when they click our CPV lab link. And here I'm going to configure that for just link clicks. And what I want to do is I want to select 
some link clicks, built-in variable, and I want to find click URL. I'm going to add that. Click URL contains, and here is where we're going to put our tracking link from CPV Lab Pro. So in this case, I'm using powerhouseaffiliate.com as my tracking link. If you're using like tracker.com or whatever you want, it doesn't matter. What I wanna do is I wanna grab just a piece of that. So we can actually just put this whole thing or you can just put a piece of it. So I could just put tracking.powerhouse if I wanted. It contains that in the link. That's the click URL. We're going to go back into Google Tag Manager and I'm gonna say it contains this and that is it. Now I'm going to save. So now every time somebody clicks a CPV Lab link, it's going to fire the Facebook pixel. It's going to say page view. Also, it's going to say initiate checkout. Okay, so now Google, uh, Facebook will see that somebody viewed the offer at the same time initiated checkout, which is um, how you do that. Now I can go into Facebook and I can actually start setting up my campaigns to optimize towards people who are clicking out of my listicle, clicking through my landing page, whatever else. Now, if I wanted, and I wanted to track conversions and sales instead, then I can take this pixel, the same exact pixel, um, copy it, and I can go over to Max Bounty, and I can actually add it into here. Um, but then, at this case, I'd have to do HTML. But that's fine. You just won't be able to uh, use the server to server. So you would put your Facebook pixel here, and then you would have to also add in your CPV lab pixel as well. So you'd have to grab the iframe because you cannot put two server to server tracking pixels into a network or any other tracking platform. You have to use iframes at this point from CPV Lab Pro and our Facebook Pixel in at the same time. And here, instead of in your Facebook Pixel um, saying page view, we could change this now to lead. If you're running a lead generation offer, you would put a lead here, okay? And you can actually change both of these to lead, to say lead, so you're not showing a page view, you're just showing every time a lead occurs, that you've gotten for this offer, which we're collecting leads for, it's going to say to Facebook, boom, there's a lead, and it's going to tell Facebook that you got a lead, and it's gonna track right here. And now every time you set up a campaign, if you want, you can target uh, the objective of getting leads or getting initiate checkouts, which is basically a click through on your landing page. There are many more events you can start tracking through Facebook doing this method. So you don't have to only track clicks on your landing page or tracking clicks on your, uh, or tracking leads, I mean. You can also track phone calls. And as I've shown in another video I posted last week, you can see on my Day Job Hacks YouTube channel how I was getting phone calls and firing this contact pixel every time somebody called the line, okay? Um, so that is another way to track. There's a whole bunch of other events you can check out inside Facebook. They have a whole bunch of training at Facebook, so I'm not gonna get into too much, but that is basically how you do it with Tag Manager and CPV Lab Pro. Now, the last step is to save our post back here in Max Bounty or whatever network we're running, and now it's time to fire up a Facebook campaign and start seeing these conversions, okay? So if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below or check out our forum at powerhouseaffiliate.com where I'm going to post this video and I'm going to answer any and all questions related to tracking. We get a ton of questions from people wondering how to set up tracking for their offers, how to set up tracking between networks, all that stuff. Now you know basically an overview of how tracking works. Each of these systems talks to one another and it's all done through these pixels, whether it's a server to server post back, whether it's an image pixel or an iframe pixel, they're all in here. Every single one of these platforms uses them and you wanna make sure that the bottom line is you're getting paid every time a conversion happens and you're tracking conversions everywhere and anytime it happens. So come in and check out CPV Lab. You can see all of the stats here. Um, you might even see some of our clicks from today. This is us just testing. Um, seeing that I landed on that page, I didn't actually click through the offer. But before you run traffic, make sure you test 
your page, okay? <clears throat> Come in, go to your landing page, um, click on the call to action here, let's see if it fires. And what you should see here now is the offer, boom, you can see it worked. And if I come back into CPV Lab, we should see one click on the landing page right here when I click refresh, and there it is. See, all of the tracking is working. We are ready to go live. So if you liked the video, please like, comment, or share, subscribe to this channel, and please feel free to join us in the forum where we're gonna discuss this much further, ask questions, all of those things, and we'll see you next week.